there. Hello. <laughs> Monique here with Stuart, the stage manager of Vegan Earth Day at Pierce College in Woodland Hills, California. It's been a long day for you. Were you here from 10 in the morning till 8 at night? I uh, was... Um here a wee bit earlier than that dear i mean we were setting up uh, you know the first band and and getting the stage and the and the sound things uh, set up so you know i was here at about 7 a.m and a couple you know and a couple of other people were here about that time too and um you know if you're if if you're the stage manager essentially you're responsible for everything that happens on the stage um in terms of things like um you know getting people on and off the stage on time you're responsible responsible for you know having adequate uh, you know precautions taken you know in case of fires and uh, making sure that there's no accidents and in case having a first aid box and uh, you know in case uh, anyone gets hurt and things like that so you need to be here a little prior to the event prior to the start of the events to you know set things like that up and make sure that you know all that sort of stuffs in place uh, before the you know the, the the folks from the fire brigade do their walk through and check everything you know um, and and then you know after the event when when it closes and the last act is finished and they break down and go then you you know it's pretty much um you know expected for you to stay and uh you know help break down the stage and send help the sound guys break down their stuff as well so um it's it's certainly not uh just for the uh, the duration of the actual performance you know from 8 uh sorry from 10 to 10 a.m to 8 p.m it's a little uh beyond both of those times either way were you able to actually watch some of these performances or were you too yeah, busy because uh, some of them are great which ones did you I like pretty i was pretty um, observant of all of them actually and uh, you know all credit to the organizers they uh, managed to get quite a nice um, varied mix of different musical styles and you know and I thought I thought the musical products were, were first rate all round you know the luminaries who were our you know headliner band they, they were really good a couple of their musicians stayed to pay, play with the uh, Preta and the pacemakers and they were um, you know uh, they were similar but you know somewhat different uh, let's see who else did we have Alex Rant? That was a sort of rock keyboard band. Uh, we had Naomi Streamer, who basically did a karaoke sort of set. She sang to um, a CD, but she was dynamite. Canadian girl, a vegan, fabulous voice. Um, so yeah, I got um, you know whenever I'm stage managing, especially something like this, you know I do whatever I can to you know uh, stand aside for ten minutes and enjoy the product, so I can talk to people after about it afterwards. Um, so yeah, I, I did manage to. We had some, some interesting speakers too and that was, uh, you know, worthwhile. Um some of them had some some really uh, really good interesting things to say, like Miss Christine Garcia, the animal lawyer, animal attorney from San Francisco. She had uh, you know a lot of uh, interesting things to say, and I really enjoyed. Uh, I was able, since I wasn't busy setting up bands at that time, I was able to listen to and you know pay attention and enjoy the the comments and the remarks played by both played uh, by both of the doctors that we had. Which we had were two, who? Uh, doctor. Uh, let's see, um, Dr. Caldwell Esselstein uh, uh, and Dr. Richard M McClellan. Both of those are medical doctors who were given sort of lectures on, you know, heart disease and how easily, it, how easy it's prevented if you, you know, become a herbivore and all the rest of it. Um, and I think, um, I think D Dr. Esselstein, who actually had uh, his son Rip Esselstein with us as well, who's the fireman who's responsible for becoming vegan and you know helping a lot of others his fellow firemen at his uh, brigade house uh, with vegan diets because they all needed to lose weight and become more healthy and all the rest of it but he's also the chap that's responsible for writing that that book that's that's you know just hitting the bestseller lists in the nutrition shelves uh, engine to diet you know and if I if a fireman become a vegan and find a lot of benefits from it you know I mean I think you know um, any Charlie can become that so, um, so it's so funny that, that you're it's funny you're saying that Stuart because uh, a few weeks ago a truck hit me just a little dent but wow it scared me and the driver came out he was pretty nice but he had this this gut right well the insurance company called me to interview me and wanted to know what the guy looked like and I had to say well he had a gut I said but he could get rid of that because he's probably um, his colon is probably locked up because he's eating a lot of meat <laughs> 
<laughs> and the insurance person said he would pass it along. I wonder if he really did, but I hope you do. Oh, oh well, that was that was uh, nice of the insurance person. I mean, I guess uh, maybe that particular uh, adjuster or actuary, whatever they were, were uh, were also a vegan. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, uh, you know, you hear about uh, just as a side uh, side note, you know, other than stage management, I just happen to be a little bit in the medical field. So I, you know, and I've been a vegan for 22 years. I've studied it. Um, and I play rugby and run marathons and I, I don't look unhealthy and I manage to keep, you know, my joints and my muscles in fairly decent shape. And um, but um, and I think, uh, you know, apart from the environmental connotations and the sort of uh, detrimental effect that not uh, adopting a vegan diet or a plant based diet, whatever you want to call it, does have on the planet, just the human benefits alone are, are amazing. I mean, if people people have all these silly miracle drugs and, and routines and and ways to lose weight and new diets and all the rest of it and, and you know it's rubbish it's just other people getting rich off other people doing the thing if they reformed their diet the, the weight would drop off overnight and uh, it's just and you know uh, and not only would they lose weight and their bodies would be in better conditions they would pre be preventing a lot of diseases which which would incur had they uh, remained omnivores and you know and you know kept on you know drinking dairy and eating cheese and you know eating corpses and flesh and things like that it's always uh, better to treat the earth better because in return you're going to look and feel better if we could all think that way what a world we would be in yeah, i i agree in in Indubitably, and I, I really, you know, couldn't say it, uh, you know, more effectively and economically and concisely than that. I mean, I think just uh, referring back to one of Bob's comments earlier today, he said... Uh, Bob Linden, he was the uh, producer of this whole event of Go Vegan Radio. Check him out. Yeah, he's, he's done a lot of research and, you know, and he, he knows what he's talking about. And he, uh, you know, and he's he studied into, you know, facts and, and research and, you know, world statistics and things like that. He's not just pulling things out of thin air. There's scientific fact and data to back it up. And I think, uh, you know, apart from the uh, ludicrous and, you know, uh, appalling cost it, it, you know, costs for health maintenance and costs in this country for people who remain, om you know, omnivores and eat uh, meat and dairy and things like that. You know, if, if we could turn that around and, and people, rather than looking at it as a burden, they would, you know, adopt a plant-based diet, they wouldn't have half the health problems. The money that goes into fixing the problems that, um, you know, a flesh-eating diet cause could be used much more efficiently elsewhere. You know, going to educational funds or something like that. Um, so, so you know, it's uh, there's there's a lot to take home rather than just you know telling people uh, no, don't eat uh, don't eat part of the cow or don't drink what the cow produces because you know apart from the fact that it's you know not karmatically you know beneficial for anybody, it's uh, it's you know ultimately it's not it's not a, a healthy thing. Um, but but there is you know scientific data in fact and, and reasons to back all that up and to 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 amplify, to uh, to demonstrate adequately the, the, all the many benefits, not just for the not just for oneself, of, of adopting a plant-based diet. And you know, Vegan Earth Day was was very um, ve you know very helpful in, in being demonstrative about a lot of that. And I think a lot of people that were here today probably took a fair bit home. You know, I was referring as I was addressing people from the stage as my fellow vegans and my vegans to be. Perhaps you know next year they will be vegans and there'll be another set of vegans to be. We'll just see. We can only hope. Well, it seems like you're, uh, you are you got to go off to your next thing because for some reason I'm up front and you're in the back here. You're just kind of running away. So we'll, <laughs> we'll wrap it up together. Right. Stuart, the stage manager of Vegan Earth Day. Again, we're at Pierce College in Woodland Hills, California. Monique and Stuart, thank you. Thanks a lot.